I'll say a little prayer for me because for some reason this morning I'm really, really nervous, and I don't really, I don't know why. <laughs> um, Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this moment to just celebrate our moms and just to pour into them, Lord. And we thank you for each lady that is sitting in this room today and the impact that they have not only on their children, their families, Lord God, but the impact that they have in this world around them. And Lord, I pray that as I speak today, as they hear this word, Lord God, that the greatest gift, one of the greatest gifts that we can impart, Lord, is the gift of faith. And so, Lord, I just pray that this word resonates with our our ladies today, Lord, and that, Lord, their faith is stirred, their Lord, is, their faith is built up, they're encouraged, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, um, on Sunday nights, the ladies have been learning to hear about the um, d- about different ways to um, hear the voice of the Lord uh, or to hear from the Lord. And we've talked a lot about faith um, in, in different things because being able to hear from the Lord, you have to have faith in the Lord. And and so, um, anyway, that's really just stirred and stirred and stirred in my spirit. And as I re- have really pressed and prayed, I just really felt like that I needed to speak on faith today. Um, because that truly is, ladies, the, the greatest gift, one of the greatest gifts that we can live out before our, our children, before the world around us, is truly a life of faith. And not just faith that we believe that there is a God, not just faith that we believe that the Lord can save us, but a true, pure life of faith that we know and we trust in the Lord in every area of our life. And not a faith that has been tainted, not a faith that has been watered down, but truly just a bold faith that we know who our God is, that we know what he is capable of, and we fully trust in that. And as I prayed, I just had to go back to the story of David and Goliath, but I want to look at it a little bit differently than the way that that maybe it's been taught. So I'm just going to do a really brief, um, recap, you can turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17 if you want to follow along because I am going to look at some specific verses. So if you want to follow along with me, that's where we'll be. But when we pick up this story, uh, Saul and the men of Israel, they're in a battle with the Philistines. Goliath, whom they, the, the Bible calls um, a champion from their camp, from the Philistine camp, he has come out and he's challenging Saul, Saul's army. Um, after hearing and seeing Goliath, Saul and all of Israel are afraid. And this goes on for 40 days. Meanwhile, David is at home. He's tending his father's sheep. His father calls him in and asks him to take some food um, to his brothers in the, at, in the battle. When David arrives um, at the battle... He hears the words of Goliath, and immediately something is stirred inside of him. He wants to know who Goliath thinks he is, defying the armies of of God. And when Saul hears what's going on inside of David, Saul sends for David to come to him. When David goes and he stands before Saul... He stands there confident in two things. One, he's confident because he has seen God's hand of protection in the past. He mentions the the lion and the bear. He also stands before Goliath confident that he will see God's protection again. He's unmovable. He's unshakable. And listen, There are many opportunities for David to be shaken before he goes and stands before Goliath to do battle. 
but, but he stands there before, before Saul with an untainted, pure faith of who God is and what God was capable of. I want to look at verse 28 because here's some, I just want to point out some things that happened to us, some things that can shake us, some things that could have shaken um, David that day. If you turn to verse 28, if you look at verse 28, uh, David's older brother, when he, I'm not sure how to say his name, his older brother heard when he spoke to the men, and anger was aroused against David. And he said, why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and, in, and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. See, whenever you do something big for God, whenever you try to step out and do something that doesn't make sense, people will question you. Who do you think you are? Why are you doing that? That doesn't make sense. They'll, te- they'll, they'll question your motives. But David wasn't shaken by that. Verse 33. Even Saul. Sorry, my Bible print is little. And it, as I get older, it seems to get smaller. <laughs> And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. People will question your ability. How can you do that? How are you going to do that? What makes you think you're capable of doing that? But David knew that him and God were enough because he'd already been tested on the backside of the wilderness. And God had proven that him, that David and God were enough. 30, verse 38. So Saul clothed David with his armor and he put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with thee, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Another thing that happens to us when we try to do big things for God, when we try to walk in faith with God, people try to put things on us that they think will work for us because it's worked for them. Well, this has worked for me, so it'll work for you. Or they've tried something, they've attempted something, and they failed, so they automatically think that if they can't do it, you can't do it. But see, people don't know what you've done alone with the Lord. They don't understand the time that you've spent with the Lord. They don't understand maybe the tiny steps of faith that you've taken where the Lord has encouraged you, where the Lord has proven himself to be true, where the Lord has proven himself to be faithful. See, they don't know those things. They know what's happened in their own life. And a lot of times people want to try to put on us those things because they don't understand what God's doing in you. And we can't allow that because that will stop us. That will hinder us. See, at any moment, any one of these people that spoke into David's life, David could have been shaken. Man, I'm not qualified to do this. I'm not able to. I'm just a youth. Why am I wanting to fight David? Am I wanting to prove something to myself? There's any any moment David could have backed down. But David knew. David knew that his God was able. David knew that his God was more than enough. And he stood there unmovable, unshakable, full of faith that God was going to take care of him. 
that God was going to deliver Goliath into his hand. And you guys know the story of David and Goliath. Um, You know what happened. And so God did not fail. God did not let um, David down. And he won't let us down either. So today I want to ask you, so how do we stay like David? Because if you live life long enough, our faith gets tested. If you stay around enough people, if you talk enough to enough people, our faith can get tainted. Sometimes our faith can get shaken. And so I want to look at a couple of ways that we can just stay grounded, that we can keep that childlike, pure faith, that no matter what is said to us, no matter what is done to us, we are unmovable, we are unshakable. We just know that we know that we know that if the Lord is asking us to do it, that it's going to work out the way that it is supposed to. The first thing that we, we, do, we can do is we remind ourselves and even others about what God has done in the past. I want to look at verse 54 for just a second. I don't know that I ever really caught this. I'm going to back up to 53 just for context. Then the children of Israel returned from chasing the Philistines, and they plundered their tents. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem. But he put his armor, Saul's armor, or not Saul, sorry, Goliath's armor, in his tent. What else do you think was in that tent? Maybe a bear paw, maybe a lion's mane, tail, I don't know. Those reminders, those trophies, if you will, of the times that God walked with him and he came out victorious. See, it's easy to get focused on the things in our life that are testing our faith, whether it's in our relationships, whether it's a sickness, whether it's financial, it's so easy to get so focused on the thing that is testing us. And we have to continually remind ourselves, if God did it once, he's going to do it again. There's nothing that is impossible with our God. He is far more capable than we give him credit for sometimes. (laughs) And we need those reminders, especially when we're in the midst of the battle, when we're in the midst of facing the giant. We need that armor. We need that bear paw. We need that lion's mane to remind us. Let me tell you something. When you're facing something, when you're going through something, and you are at your darkest moment, go testify to somebody of the goodness of God. Because you know what's going to happen? Not only are you going to boost their faith and encourage them, but there's going to be something inside of you that's going to be awakened to the faithfulness and the goodness of God. Number two, be selective on who speaks into your life. Listen. If somebody's not walking the journey with you, if somebody's not living a life full of faith, don't give them space to speak into you. Don't allow them to speak into something that God is trying to do it to you because they don't know. 
If they're not living a life of faith, if they're not walking by faith, if they're not taking big steps of faith, if they're not listening to the voice of the Lord, they have no place speaking into your life because they are going to lead you astray. The only people that should be speaking into your life when it comes to the things of the Lord are the things that are the people that are walking that faith life with you. Those people that are taking big steps of faith Because they're going to be able to truly speak into it the things of God. When Brandon and I decided that we were going to take the this, this step to move to Lawrence, we were very selective of who we talked to. The first person that we talked to was our pastors because our pastors were living the life that we wanted to live. We looked at the we could we could look at their life and they mirrored what we wanted in our life in our ministry. We had watched them do crazy things <laughs> that didn't make sense in the natural. So we knew when we went to them and we presented it to them that they weren't going to look at what was impossible. But they were going to speak into it faith. And that's who should be speaking into your life. So listen, I love my mother. I love her. She does not know what it's like to live a crazy life of faith. And there are things that Brandon and I have done along the way that have not made sense to her. And there have been times that she has tried to talk us out of doing some things because they didn't make sense. She was worried about the grandkids. She was worried about her daughter. Listen, I get it. But I can't give her space to speak into those moments. I couldn't give her space to speak into or give advice into something that she doesn't truly know and understand. because She's not been there. She's not walked it. Doesn't change my love for her. Doesn't change my respect for her. There are other things I go and I ask my mom's advice for. But when it comes to the things of the Lord, when it comes to taking steps of faith, that's not one of them. You need to know who the people are in your life and what they're there for. Some people are just there for their friendship, and that's it. They don't, have it. They don't need to speak into your life. Number three, and this is something that the ladies are really getting. <laughs> we have to allow ourselves to be childlike. And I'm going to elaborate on that. Kids fully trust and rely on their parents. Listen, our little grandson, Leo, Loves his daddy. Fiercely loves his daddy. You want to get Leo mad, you say something bad about his daddy. You want to get Leo riled up, you tell him his daddy can't do something. Because in his eyes, daddy can do anything. Anything. It don't matter if Tyler's never done it before. If Leo thinks his daddy can do anything. See, he hasn't encountered life <laughs> that has tainted his viewpoint of his daddy. Right now, the way he looks at his dad is through pure eyes. And he fully trusts and he fully relies on dad. Guys, we have to be like that. Nobody should ever be able to speak to you and change the way you see Father God. You should be have that thing inside of you. You want to get you want to see somebody get you upset, tell let them tell you that God can't or God won't. 
or God's not able. Because he is. But the way we stay there, the way we stay in that place, is we have to be childlike. We have to have that faith that we had when we first fell in love with Jesus, when we first encountered Jesus, when everything was so alive and vibrant and exciting and passionate and all the things. Little kids learn by imitating. They watch and they repeat. We have to be imitators of God. When we're watching the Lord and we're doing what the Lord does and how he does it, our faith is growing. Our faith is being strengthened. Our faith is being stretched. Guys, this is a big one. We've got to get back to the very simplicity of who Jesus is and the gospel message. Somewhere along the way, we have complicated Christianity. We've complicated things. And it is so simple. God loves us so much. His desire is that none would perish. But we've made things so complicated that people look at the gospel message, they look at salvation, they look at Jesus, and they're like, I'll never, I can't, I can't. And then we wonder why young people are leaving the church in droves. It's because what's being put on them is so complicated and it's so simple. So simple. Jesus loves you. He sees the mess that you're in. He knows that you're a sinner, but he loves you way too much to leave you in your sin. And he just wants an opportunity to come into your life and have a relationship with him. Period. Period. Listen, you don't wait and go to the doctor when you're well. Right? You don't take your car to the mechanic after your husband's already worked on it and fixed it, right? Or attempted to fix it, right? I w- that wasn't a dig, I promise. <laughs> so why do we think that we have to clean everything up and get fixed before we go to the Savior? Because we've complicated things. We've made the gospel meshes complicated. So people try to do the work themselves so that they can present themselves worthy of what God has for them. We struggle with our faith Because we've complicated things. And it doesn't have to be complicated. Father God is a good God. He wants the very best for you. If it says it in the Bible, then it is true. When the Bible says, by his stripes, you are healed, that means if you're sick, there's healing available. You can look at every area in your life, and you can find a scripture that speaks truth to it. 
We don't have to work for it. We don't have to have a magic potion for it. We don't have to do 50 different rituals. We simply have to have faith that if the word says it, it's true and it applies to me. I don't have to be anything special. I don't have to be do anything special. I just have to believe that this word is true and that my God is able. One of the biggest hindrances that we have to these things is that a lot of times we've not had the greatest relationship with our parents. And therefore, being able to look at God as father, mother, we're looking through a tainted lens. And so it's hard for us to be fully reliant on God. It's hard for us to fully trust in God. Because hearing the word Father brings up something inside of us because of a wound. With a parent, with a natural parent. It is of the utmost importance that we're able to allow God to come in and to touch that place and to heal it so that we can. Look at Father God as Father, as one who is, I hate to say it, but one that is worthy to be fully trusted and relied upon, who is one that is worthy to be imitated, who is one that we're able to accept love and all of the things that God has for us. If you can't look at God as Father, because Father brings up hurt and pain, look at Him as parent, as mother, as grandmother, as a grandfather. We have to start somewhere. And God is all things to all men. So if I can't see Father God and accept fatherly love, accept fatherly acceptance, accept fatherly guidance, whatever, then I think back to my granny, who is my whole world. Who was my safety, my safe place. And I begin to look at Father through that lens. Because if we'll start somewhere and allow God to be that in our life, then it's just a progression. We begin to move and we begin to see all the different facets of God. And before too long, we no longer have to look at God through the lens of granny. Because I'm seeing him as the father. I'm seeing him maybe as the things that I missed. 
out on our zip line. We have to know him to be able to have faith in him. We have to know him to be able to trust and rely on him. We have to know him in the fullness of who he is so that we can have this kind of faith. Mama's the greatest thing that you can do for your kids is live out a crazy, crazy life of faith. Where your kids look at you, and because of the life that you have lived, they know that God can do anything. Because what we do is we open up a whole world to them where they truly know that there are endless possibilities. Not just in spiritual things, but in natural things. I've always wanted my kids to know that they can do and be anything. If they're pursuing God with everything inside of them, then the desires of their heart are going to be handed to them. When I die, I want my kids to stand at my funeral and say, my mom was crazy for Jesus. And we saw God do crazy things in her life. That, to me, is a life well lived. A life well lived. Can't speak on faith and not have prayer. (laughs) So if you're here today and you just need some encouragement, you need your faith built up, Pastor Brandon and I want